Welcome to this transformative self-coaching program designed to help you integrate and recover from the pattern and beliefs of relationship CPTSD and social anxiety. This is an emotional EMDR mini course whose goal is to guide you through a process of understanding, reframing, and building resilience to this pattern or belief. It is recommended that you use this program in full screen mode, while sitting still and upright. Follow the movements of the ball or pattern on the screen with your eyes. As the words from the audio are spoken, notice the feelings they evoke in your body and any mental images that may arise. If your mind starts to wander, gently redirect your focus back to the moving ball or pattern. Optionally, or if you are not able to use video, you can also tap on one or more EFT points. How it works. In step one, we evoke the distressful emotional state of the belief or pattern. Note. This can be emotionally triggering. In step two, we offer ourselves loving, compassionate self-acceptance for this state and beliefs. We then reframe the belief, pattern or state with new positive suggestions to the mind. We then bridge the mind into the new, more positive reality. We finally express gratitude for the new positive reality, taking it as fact. Ready. Section 1. Unpacking Emotional Experiences. We begin with a setup of the issue. Even though I struggle with this pattern, I choose to still deeply love, honor and accept myself, and I am open to a more empowering state of being. Take a deep breath. I often feel anxious in social situations, worrying about being judged or rejected. I have a deep-seated belief that I am not good enough, which makes me doubt my worth in relationships. I find myself avoiding social gatherings because I fear I'll say or do something embarrassing. I recall being criticized and dismissed in my past relationships, which makes me hesitant to open up to others. I struggle with the belief that I will always be hurt in relationships, just like I was in the past. I often feel like an outsider, unable to connect with people on a deeper level. I have a persistent fear that my customers won't make purchases, reflecting my inadequacy. In conversations, I'm constantly worried about being ignored or misunderstood. I find myself conforming to what others want, fearing that my true self isn't acceptable. I tend to isolate myself, believing that it's safer to be alone than risk being hurt again. I feel like I'm always on guard, ready to defend myself in interactions. I have a hard time expressing my needs and feelings, worried they'll be used against me. I believe that people I like will inevitably reject me once they get to know the real me. I often replay past rejections in my mind, convincing myself that they'll happen again. I feel a sense of dread when thinking about initiating conversations or meeting new people. I struggle with low self-esteem, constantly comparing myself to others and feeling inferior. I have a pattern of staying in unsatisfying relationships because I'm scared of being alone. I frequently feel misunderstood and struggle to find common ground with others. I believe that if I show my vulnerability, people will see me as weak and take advantage of me. I often feel overwhelmed and anxious in ordinary social exchanges. I have a deep fear of being attacked or criticized, so I keep my opinions to myself. I believe that I am inherently unlovable, which makes relationships feel impossible. I feel like I'm constantly performing in social situations, never able to be my authentic self. I avoid eye contact and keep conversations short to minimize the risk of getting hurt. I believe that my past traumas define me and that I'm doomed to repeat them in every relationship. I feel like I'm not bringing my whole self to conversations, always holding back. I often feel lonely and disconnected, but the fear of rejection keeps me from reaching out. I have a hard time trusting others, always waiting for the other shoe to drop. I believe that cooperation and harmony in relationships are unattainable for me. I find myself overanalyzing every interaction, worried about how I'm perceived. I feel like an imposter in social settings, as if I don't truly belong anywhere. I often experience a sense of panic when faced with the possibility of making new connections. I believe that my worth is contingent on others' approval, so I constantly seek validation. I feel like I'm in survival mode when it comes to social interactions, just getting by. 
I hold a deep belief that I will always be let down or disappointed in relationships. Section 2. Feel into this balanced, compassionate perspective from your inner coach. Maintain your attention on the EMDR screen, following the movements of the shape or pattern with your eyes. I warmly embrace my anxiety in social situations, understanding it as a natural response to my desire for acceptance. I lovingly accept my belief of not being good enough, recognizing it as a part of my journey towards self-love. I compassionately hold my fear of social gatherings, seeing it as a protective measure by my heart. I gently acknowledge my past experiences of criticism, understanding they have shaped my cautious approach to openness. I tenderly accept my belief of being hurt in relationships, recognizing it as a reflection of my past wounds. I kindly embrace my feelings of being an outsider, understanding it as a unique perspective I bring to the world. I compassionately acknowledge my fear regarding my customers, seeing it as a reflection of my deep commitment to my work. I warmly hold my worries about being ignored in conversations, understanding them as part of my desire to connect authentically. I gently accept my tendency to conform, seeing it as my way of seeking harmony and acceptance. I lovingly embrace my choice to isolate, recognizing it as a need for safety and self-preservation. I compassionately acknowledge my defensiveness in interactions, understanding it as a form of self-protection. I tenderly hold my difficulty in expressing needs, seeing it as a part of my journey towards finding my voice. I warmly accept my belief in inevitable rejection, recognizing it as a reflection of my vulnerability. I gently acknowledge the replay of past rejections, understanding it as part of my process of healing. I compassionately hold my dread of initiating conversations, seeing it as a sign of my sensitivity and depth. I lovingly embrace my low self-esteem, recognizing it as an area where I can grow in self-compassion. I gently accept my pattern of staying in unsatisfying relationships, seeing it as a search for connection and belonging. I warmly acknowledge my feelings of being misunderstood, understanding them as part of my journey towards authentic communication. I tenderly accept my fear of showing vulnerability, recognizing it as a sign of my strength and resilience. I compassionately embrace my anxiety in social exchanges, seeing it as a part of my unique interaction style. I kindly hold my fear of criticism, understanding it as a reflection of my thoughtfulness and depth. I lovingly accept my belief of being unlovable, seeing it as an opportunity to discover my inherent worth. I gently acknowledge my performance in social situations, understanding it as a part of my quest for authenticity. I compassionately embrace my avoidance of eye contact, recognizing it as a part of my protective nature. I tenderly hold my belief that past traumas define me, seeing it as a part of my journey towards healing and growth. I warmly accept my hesitation to bring my whole self to conversations, understanding it as part of my path towards self-expression. I lovingly acknowledge my loneliness and fear of rejection, seeing it as a sign of my deep desire for meaningful connections. I gently embrace my difficulty in trusting others, recognizing it as a part of my process in learning to trust. I compassionately hold my belief in the unattainability of harmony, seeing it as a reflection of my longing for deep connections. I kindly accept my tendency to overanalyze interactions, understanding it as part of my keen awareness and sensitivity. I warmly embrace my feelings of being an imposter, recognizing them as part of my journey towards self-acceptance. I gently acknowledge my panic in making new connections, seeing it as a part of my courageous step towards growth. I compassionately hold my need for others' approval, understanding it as a part of my path towards self-validation. I lovingly accept my survival mode in social interactions, recognizing it as a part of my resilience and adaptability. I tenderly acknowledge my belief in being let down in relationships, seeing it as a reflection of my depth of feeling and capacity for love. Section 3. Visualizing positive change. Take a deep breath. I am choosing now to embrace my social anxiety as a gateway to deeper self-understanding and confidence. I am open to the possibility of seeing my self-doubt as a catalyst for cultivating a profound sense of self-worth. I could consider each social gathering as an opportunity to celebrate my uniqueness and overcome my fears. 
It would be nice if I viewed past criticisms as stepping stones to building stronger, more authentic connections. It is possible that my past relationship hurts are transforming into lessons of resilience and self-compassion. I can start to view my outsider feelings as a unique strength, enabling me to offer fresh perspectives. I am willing to explore how my fear of customer rejection can lead to innovative approaches in my business. I have the opportunity to turn my conversational worries into a journey towards clear and impactful communication. I am capable of seeing my adaptability to others' desires as a skill, while also honoring my true self. I embrace the idea of finding strength in solitude, while also opening myself to the joy of meaningful connections. I am ready to transform my defensive stance into a powerful tool for setting healthy boundaries. I am beginning to see my struggles in expressing needs as a path to discovering and asserting my true voice. I am receptive to the idea that my fear of rejection is evolving into a brave pursuit of genuine relationships. I am shifting towards viewing past rejections as lessons in resilience and self-growth. I am open-minded about transforming my dread of new interactions into excitement for potential friendships. I am allowing myself to reframe my low self-esteem as a journey towards embracing my unique qualities. I can imagine staying in challenging relationships as a reflection of my hope and determination for love. It might be beneficial to see my feelings of being misunderstood as an opportunity to develop deeper empathy. I am prepared to view my reluctance to show vulnerability as a sign of my inner strength and courage. I am choosing to focus on transforming my social anxiety into a celebration of my individuality and warmth. I am open to the possibility of turning my fear of criticism into a profound respect for my own opinions. I can see the potential for realizing that my perceived unlovability is an invitation to unconditional self-love. I am becoming more aware of how my social performance can evolve into a confident expression of my true self. I am ready to let go of my eye contact avoidance and embrace open, heartfelt communication. I am exploring the idea of my past traumas being powerful catalysts for transformation and empowerment. I am creating space for bringing my entire self to conversations, celebrating my authenticity. I am entertaining the thought of turning my loneliness into a bridge towards deeply fulfilling relationships. I am willing to consider my trust issues as stepping stones to building stronger, more genuine connections. I am opening myself up to the realization that harmony in relationships is a rewarding journey I am capable of achieving. I am giving myself permission to transform my overanalysis of interactions into a tool for intuitive, heartfelt communication. I can see the advantages of embracing my imposter feelings as an opportunity for profound self-acceptance. I am open to discovering the strength and courage within my panic about making new connections. I am beginning to see the value in viewing my need for approval as a path to self-validation and inner confidence. I am ready to embrace my survival mode in social settings as a testament to my adaptability and resourcefulness. I am adopting a mindset of seeing my fear of disappointment in relationships as a doorway to deep, trusting connections. Section 4. Bridging the two worlds from emotion to aspiration. Remember to maintain your focus on the EMDR screen, following the movements of the shape or pattern with your eyes. Even though I often feel anxious in social situations, worrying about being judged or rejected, I warmly embrace this anxiety, understanding it as a natural response to my desire for acceptance, and I am choosing now to embrace it as a gateway to deeper self-understanding and confidence. Although I have a deep-seated belief that I am not good enough, making me doubt my worth in relationships, I lovingly accept this belief, recognizing it as a part of my journey towards self-love, and I am open to the possibility of seeing it as a catalyst for cultivating a profound sense of self-worth. While I find myself avoiding social gatherings for fear of embarrassment, I compassionately hold this fear, seeing it as a protective measure by my heart, and I could consider each gathering as an opportunity to celebrate my uniqueness and overcome my fears. Despite recalling being criticized and dismissed in past relationships, making me hesitant to open up, I gently acknowledge these past experiences, understanding they have shaped my cautious approach, and it would be nice if I viewed these criticisms as stepping stones to building stronger, more authentic connections. 
Though I struggle with the belief that I will always be hurt in relationships, just like in the past, I tenderly accept this belief, recognizing it as a reflection of my past wounds, and it is possible that these past hurts are transforming into lessons of resilience and self-compassion. Even when I feel like an outsider, unable to connect deeply with people, I kindly embrace these feelings, understanding them as a unique perspective I bring, and I can start to view these outsider feelings as a unique strength, enabling me to offer fresh perspectives. Although I fear my customers won't make purchases, reflecting my inadequacy, I compassionately acknowledge this fear, seeing it as a reflection of my commitment to my work, and I am willing to explore how this fear can lead to innovative approaches in my business. Even though I'm constantly worried about being ignored or misunderstood in conversations, I warmly hold these worries, understanding them as part of my desire to connect authentically, and I have the opportunity to turn them into a journey towards clear and impactful communication. While I find myself conforming to what others want, fearing that my true self isn't acceptable, I gently accept this tendency, seeing it as my way of seeking harmony and acceptance, and I am capable of seeing my adaptability as a skill, while also honoring my true self. Despite tending to isolate myself, believing it's safer to be alone than risk being hurt again, I lovingly embrace this choice, recognizing it as a need for safety and self-preservation, and I embrace the idea of finding strength in solitude, while also opening myself to the joy of meaningful connections. Though I often feel on guard, ready to defend myself in interactions, I compassionately acknowledge this defensiveness, understanding it as a form of self-protection, and I am ready to transform my defensive stance into a powerful tool for setting healthy boundaries. Even when I have a hard time expressing my needs and feelings, worried they'll be used against me, I tenderly hold this difficulty, seeing it as a part of my journey towards finding my voice, and I am beginning to see my struggles in expressing needs as a path to discovering and asserting my true voice. Although I believe people I like will inevitably reject me once they get to know the real me, I warmly accept this belief, recognizing it as a reflection of my vulnerability, and I am receptive to the idea that my fear of rejection is evolving into a brave pursuit of genuine relationships. Even though I often replay past rejections in my mind, convincing myself they'll happen again, I gently acknowledge these replays, understanding them as part of my process of healing, and I am shifting towards viewing past rejections as lessons in resilience and self-growth. While I feel a sense of dread when thinking about initiating conversations or meeting new people, I compassionately hold this dread, seeing it as a sign of my sensitivity and depth, and I am open-minded about transforming my dread of new interactions into excitement for potential friendships. Despite struggling with low self-esteem, constantly comparing myself to others and feeling inferior, I lovingly embrace this struggle, recognizing it as an area where I can grow in self-compassion, and I am allowing myself to reframe my low self-esteem as a journey towards embracing my unique qualities. Though I have a pattern of staying in unsatisfying relationships because I'm scared of being alone, I gently accept this pattern, seeing it as a search for connection and belonging, and I can imagine staying in these relationships as a reflection of my hope and determination for love. Even when I frequently feel misunderstood and struggle to find common ground with others, I warmly acknowledge these feelings, understanding them as part of my journey towards authentic communication, and it might be beneficial to see my feelings of being misunderstood as an opportunity to develop deeper empathy. While I believe showing vulnerability will make people see me as weak and take advantage of me, I tenderly accept this fear, recognizing it as a sign of my strength and resilience, and I am prepared to view my reluctance to show vulnerability as a sign of my inner strength and courage. Though I often feel overwhelmed and anxious in ordinary social exchanges, I compassionately embrace this anxiety, seeing it as a part of my unique interaction style, and I am choosing to focus on transforming my social anxiety into a celebration of my individuality and warmth. Despite having a deep fear of being attacked or criticized, so I keep my opinions to myself, I kindly hold this fear, understanding it as a reflection of my thoughtfulness and depth, and I am open to the possibility of turning my fear of criticism into a profound respect for my own opinions. While I believe I am inherently unlovable, which makes relationships feel impossible, I lovingly accept this belief, 
seeing it as an opportunity to discover my inherent worth, and I can see the potential for realizing that my perceived unlovability is an invitation to unconditional self-love. Even though I feel like I'm constantly performing in social situations, never able to be my authentic self, I gently acknowledge this performance, understanding it as a part of my quest for authenticity, and I am becoming more aware of how my social performance can evolve into a confident expression of my true self. Despite avoiding eye contact and keeping conversations short to minimize the risk of getting hurt, I compassionately embrace this avoidance, recognizing it as a part of my protective nature, and I am ready to let go of my eye contact avoidance and embrace open, heartfelt communication. Though I believe my past traumas define me and that I'm doomed to repeat them in every relationship, I tenderly hold this belief, seeing it as a part of my journey towards healing and growth, and I am exploring the idea of my past traumas being powerful catalysts for transformation and empowerment. Even when I feel like I'm not bringing my whole self to conversations, always holding back, I warmly accept this hesitation, understanding it as part of my path towards self-expression, and I am creating space for bringing my entire self to conversations, celebrating my authenticity. Although I often feel lonely and disconnected, but the fear of rejection keeps me from reaching out, I lovingly acknowledge my loneliness and fear of rejection, seeing them as a sign of my deep desire for meaningful connections, and I am entertaining the thought of turning my loneliness into a bridge towards deeply fulfilling relationships. Even though I have a hard time trusting others, always waiting for the other shoe to drop, I gently embrace my difficulty in trusting, recognizing it as a part of my process in learning to trust, and I am willing to consider my trust issues as stepping stones to building stronger, more genuine connections. While I believe that cooperation and harmony in relationships are unattainable for me, I compassionately hold this belief, seeing it as a reflection of my longing for deep connections, and I am opening myself up to the realization that harmony in relationships is a rewarding journey I am capable of achieving. Despite finding myself overanalyzing every interaction, worried about how I'm perceived, I kindly accept my tendency to overanalyze, understanding it as part of my keen awareness and sensitivity, and I am giving myself permission to transform my overanalysis of interactions into a tool for intuitive, heartfelt communication. Though I feel like an imposter in social settings, as if I don't truly belong anywhere, I warmly embrace these feelings, recognizing them as part of my journey towards self-acceptance, and I can see the advantages of embracing my imposter feelings as an opportunity for profound self-acceptance. Even when I often experience a sense of panic when faced with the possibility of making new connections, I gently acknowledge this panic, seeing it as a part of my courageous step towards growth, and I am open to discovering the strength and courage within my panic about making new connections. Although I believe my worth is contingent on others' approval, so I constantly seek validation, I compassionately hold this need for approval. Understanding it is a part of my path towards self-validation, and I am beginning to see the value in viewing my need for approval as a path to self-validation and inner confidence. While I feel like I'm in survival mode when it comes to social interactions, just getting by, I lovingly accept this mode recognizing it as a part of my resilience and adaptability, and I am ready to embrace my survival mode in social settings as a testament to my adaptability and resourcefulness. Even though I hold a deep belief that I will always be let down or disappointed in relationships, I tenderly acknowledge this belief, seeing it as a reflection of my depth of feeling and capacity for love, and I am adopting a mindset of seeing my fear of disappointment as a doorway to deep, trusting connections. If you were tapping, you can stop tapping as we go into gratitude. Section 5. Preemptive Gratitude for Transformation. These affirmations are designed to uplift your spirit, align you with your highest self, and resonate with the boundless love and support that the universe offers you. I am grateful for my journey towards self-love and acceptance, embracing every aspect of myself with kindness and compassion. I give thanks for the strength that emerges from my vulnerabilities, transforming my fears into sources of resilience. I appreciate the unique perspectives and insights my social anxieties have brought me, leading to deeper self-awareness. I am thankful for the lessons learned from past criticisms, which have sculpted me into a more empathetic and understanding person. 
I celebrate the growth that comes from my relationship challenges, seeing them as opportunities for profound personal development. I am grateful for my outsider's view, as it has allowed me to develop a unique and valuable perspective on the world. I give thanks for the fears I face in my business, as they fuel my creativity and drive towards success. I appreciate my sensitivity in conversations, as it fosters a deeper connection and understanding with others. I am thankful for my ability to adapt and conform when needed, while also learning to honor and express my true self. I embrace the solitude I once feared, finding gratitude in its role in strengthening my inner peace and self-reliance. I appreciate my defensive instincts, as they teach me the importance of setting boundaries and self-respect. I am grateful for my struggle to express my needs, as it guides me towards finding my voice and asserting my worth. I give thanks for my fear of rejection, as it motivates me to seek and cherish authentic and meaningful relationships. I am thankful for the memories of past rejections, as they remind me of my growth and resilience. I celebrate the courage it takes to initiate conversations and meet new people, recognizing the strength in each step I take. Section 6. Closing and Next Steps. Take a deep, rejuvenating breath. Congratulations on completing this transformative session. Take a note of how you feel in comparison to how you started, and consider journaling your notes about this session and any areas you'd like to explore. Be attentive to the potential reduction in the emotional weight of certain memories and actual circumstance shifts in your daily life. Note that it may take one, several or many uses of this program to completely clear or reframe this pattern and beliefs. This program and affirmations serve to fortify your inner journey toward a more empowered state. Feel free to revisit them whenever you need to. For more details, see the link in the bio or description below.